Grice, the technical manager here at Ellard. Today I will be introducing our new fire control panel, the FCP03. I will be going through the features and benefits of the, um, of the board and I will also go inside the board and give you a quick overview. So the FCP03, it has a large visual fire shutter closing on the lid with um, audio and visual with um, 103 decibel sounder. It's easy to program with the buttons on the lid. It accepts set, many fire signals, so you've got the normally open, a normally closed, volt free signal or a 24 volt DC. You've got removable terminals inside, which I will uh, show you shortly. Um, you've got low voltage external controls via your key switch or your push button station. It has a panic circuit incorporated, which again I'll explain further. You've got two 12 volt, 1.3 volt amp power batteries inside. So you can also have the panel backed up and loss of mains. And you have a matching repeater panel that we can do, which is basically it's the same panel with just an auxiliary sounder and flashing light in a dummy box that can go on the other side of the wall. So the FCP03 um, uses three main main settings you have fast set one fast set four and fast set five fast set one is for solenoid drop fast set four is for drive down operation and fast set five is for two stage closing so if i do a quick setup of the panel just to show you how it's done so what you do is you have a select up and down button on the lid if you hold all three buttons down together you should see the internal light flash on. That will then access the, the menu. So that it comes up with engineer setup, fast set one. So again, that's for solenoid drop. So for example, on this um, instance, what we'll do is we'll set it up for fast set four, drive down operation. So to get to fast set four, if you press up until you get to fast set four, So I've gone too far there, so if I just press the down and go back to fast set four, then press select, it will say full close delay, and then it will come up with mins and three zeros. So that is your delay time of when the fire alarm goes off until the door drops. So generally it's not usually minutes, but you can have minutes if you want. So if you don't want the minutes, if you press select, it will come up seconds. The average time usually is about 30, but for, for this, I'll just take it to 10. It will then up, come full, close, drop. So that's the time it takes the shutter from the fully open to the fully closed position to, to drop. So again, it's not usually minutes. So if you press select again, it'll come up seconds. So for this, I know it takes 30 seconds. So if I then just go up to 30, select then it'll come up reopen time so the reopen time is used for the panic circuit so what can happen is the door will go down it'll drive down for 30 seconds if the fire alarm is still active and the door is in the closed position and somebody is stuck in we've incorporated a panic circuit that you can press the door will reopen time out for 12 seconds and then reclose so Again, if I just put in to the seconds, which is the same time as the drop time, which is 30 seconds, press select, panel will flash on. Wait for the panel to reset, for the mains and the set light to come on. And now that is set. So if I was to trigger the alarm, what will happen is the, the, it will activate the panel. It will time out for 10 seconds and then the door will close for 30 seconds. Thank you. 
So once once the once the door is in the closed position and the fire alarm is still active, the way that you can tell is you'll see that the set light is flashing. That's that, that indicates that there's um, a fire alarm signal still active to the panel. So what you'll notice is the door will not operate until the panel is reset. <coughs> so that is incorporated into the panic circuit. And now the door is reopening. 30 seconds. It will delay for 12 seconds and then it will reclose. This is active all the time with it, as long as the fire alarm signal is still active. You can reopen and close the door as many times as you like. So once the door is down and the fire alarm is reset and the signal is removed, the panel will automatically reset. So with the fire with the fire panel, it also has a, a photocell circuit. So again, that works in in fire operation only. So when the fire alarm goes off, if the door drives down, if you break the photocell, you can send the door back up as well. The beauty of this panel is, again, it's got two 12 volt, 1.3 amp hour batteries. So if it's set for drive down operation and you lose power to the panel, the panel will automatically recognize that it's lost the panel so next time the fire alarm goes off, it will then revert to the solenoid so the door can still close. So inside the fire control panel, I'll give you um, a quick overview of the board. So here we have the, the 230 volt mains coming in. If you've got a 230 volt motor, you can pick up the 230 volts onto this terminal. You've got two lots of terminals that are attached to two 12 volt 1.3 amp batteries inside the panel it's got a permanent trickle charger so it's constantly charging the batteries you've got two lots of external 24 volt uh, connections you've got two lots of external 12 volt connections you've got your internal 103 decibel sounder and then you've got your external connections for your repeater panel to wire into so in the top right hand corner you have your fire alarm input, you have your photocell input, your second fire alarm input, so it does it does two signals for two stage closing. We have your solenoid connections, you have two auxiliary relays on the board, auxiliary two and auxiliary one, that you can program to do different things within the extended mem uh, menu. You have your motor outputs, your push button outputs, and you can have an external reset as well. So on the top here, these are all volt-free connections. So this is currently running our JM fire motor. So this will also run a 230 volt tubular motor or a 24 volt DC motor as well. So it's quite a versatile panel that can do um, different motors. So we also do the FCP01, which is just a simple fire control panel purely for tube motors. So within the board, you have a 98 decibel sounder. You've got your 230 volt mains in, your 230 volt tube motor connections. 
you got your normally open fire signal you can also have that normally closed by a, a dip switch you've got a photocell circuit that operates in normal operation not in fire you've got an external stop circuit and key switch connections you've also got various dip switches so you can have minutes or seconds before the door drops you've also got a run timer pot for however long the motor works you've got status leds and you've got you've got um, an external flashing light on the lid so if i was to trigger the panel as you'll see you've got the leds inside so that flashes through when the lid is on so if you just want a stripped down panel with not the extra features of the fcp03 the fcp01 is uh, the perfect option